I did go in the dunk tank, yeah. I don't think anyone hit the ball, though. I think they just slapped their hand on the, on the, on the thing to get me down, but it worked out. Not even the quarterbacks get hit? They try. I, I think the quarterbacks got Coach Wilson, the receivers tried to get me, but it worked out. So, obviously, a very tough loss with Jay Shun suffering his second season and an ACL injury. How has your group adapted to uh, this loss? Yeah, right. It, it's for us, it's been the next guy up. And uh, we hate to lose Jay Sean. It's hard to see a young man go through this for a second year in a row. But he's had a tremendous attitude. I think he's focused on uh, what he can do to help the team right now. And for him, that means helping these younger players get ready to play. But in our room, we looked at each other and said, listen, we need to pick up the flag, next man up. And we need to continue to go, continue to move forward. And uh, again, that's why you recruit and you develop young players and you get them ready to play. Mitchell was the next man up for you guys last year after he suffered that first, Jay Sean suffered that first ACL injury. Who do you feel like can make that big of a step in terms of development this season with that new opportunity? Right now, we're looking at Isaac James. We're looking at Ricky Brookins. Those are probably the top two guys we're looking to fill, you know, that, that, that backup position behind Mitchell Page. Um, but at any time, the other thing we can do is always move guys from outside receivers to inside if we had to. Luke Timmins, a kid who played in the slot before. Donovan Hale has done that before. So for us, it's just a matter of getting the best 11 guys on the field. And then we may, again, adjust some positions if we have to. Coach Wilson said, I guess, um, sort of the quarterback situation, Richard is getting the bulk of the reps, I think was the way he put it. Just kind of what have you seen from him in camp that maybe moves him up a little bit and, and kind of what does he still need to work on? I've seen a lot of growth from Rich and, and really just in his technique of, um, of, of keeping a base and feet, uh, delivering the ball the right way, uh, making his reads. He's playing more confidently right now. Um, he's he's, he's going to be a bigger physical presence. Um, but those other guys are having great camps as well. Danny Cameron's doing phenomenal. Austin King's really come on. Uh, Xander Diamond is, is still in the same kind of role that he's been in. Uh, so we're really pleased with all four of those guys right now. Um, I just think Lego's playing at a different game right now. There's just a different level. He's playing with more confidence. Um, there are always things to work on, and I think for him, it's just going to be some game experience. I think he's going to learn just a ton in this first game and then just can take that and continue to grow from week to week this season. Coach uh, Wilson mentioned Coy Cronk, a lot of the guys really impressed on the line. From your point of view, what have you seen from the allowed him to transition so smoothly? One, he's, he's an intelligent young man, so he's been able to learn the offense. <clears throat> and two, he, he, he comes with a good physical presence, uh, strong, is able to hold up, athletic kid, can move his feet. Uh, a lot of times for freshman low linemen, things happen awful fast up front. But his athletic ability, his ability to, to move his feet uh, in the right spot has been what's been able to allow him to step forward, I think, right now. Um, and again, he's a smart kid. So it becomes a lot after a while. So freshmen sort of, at a certain point, hit a wall. And he hasn't quite hit that wall yet, which is a good sign. Can you talk about <clears throat> the different pieces and maybe the different styles of runners you have in that running back room? Shoo. I think it's hard to talk about all of them because we have a lot. You know, you start with Devine and, and Devante. Um, it's going to be hard to go through all of them. I, I, you know, we have some bigger, thicker guys. We have some more slasher guys. Um, so, you know, for us, we like the balance that we have. Uh, our challenge is going to be how do we get them all on the field? And right now, those guys are slugging it out on the practice field, trying to determine who should get the bulk of the reps. Um, but I think we have some good one-two punches, just a matter of how we can put those together. But with the newcomers, you got Cole Guess and Tyler McKee feel like they're kind of staying out. Obviously, two different backs, but what have you seen from them that kind of impressed you? I think with Tyler Nati, his ability to learn um, the entire offense and just continue to move forward every single day. Again, I, I talked about um, just hitting that wall. And I don't, I don't think Tyler Nati has been there yet. Um, Cole is a kid who brings some explosion to that room. He's got a quick first step. Um, he packs a punch for, for a little guy. Um, and he's going to be, again, the, the, the guy that can take it 90 yards. You know, So they are different. I think they're both doing a really good job. I think Tyler, we're trying to feed him as much as we can, trying to put him in different situations. Uh, Cole's doing a phenomenal job of just um, bringing that second gear to that room. But I'm excited to watch both those guys play. Is there, I guess, maybe room for just a, a larger workload for that position in general, especially early when you are breaking in a new quarterback? You know, I think every year teams figure out who they are. And it takes a while to figure out who you are. And as coaches, we kind of think that we know. But until we go play games, you really don't know. So yeah, I would say that we're going to have some some sets where we got a couple backs in there, some sets where we're going to spread the field. Just we want to we want to try to use everything that we got that we think that we have. And then let's find out who's really making plays. Uh, at the end of the day, players show up on game day. So we'll, we'll figure out who we are here in the next, as we play a couple games and kind of keep shaking through some stuff.
What went into the uh, decision to move Keontae to receive him and keep Cole in the backfield? Was it just a matter of you like Cole's approach to that position? And what, what yeah, I just think it just sort of shook itself out. I think Cole, again, is in the mix right now. He's playing a lot of football. He sort of has, has separated himself. We know Keontae's a young man with the world of ability. He's as fast as anyone we have on our team. He's a, he's a big 195, 200-pound kid. So he has the physical tools. He has the, the speed that you want. Um, so we knew we wanted to get him on the field somewhere. And if you're not camp careful right now with our running back depth, he could be sitting on the bench. So let's just see if we can't find a way to get him in the mix some way. Special teams, returner, as a wide receiver. But we got to find a way, hopefully, to, to put the ball in his hands and see if he can make plays. Guy like Taysier Mack coming into the league, mm -hmm. Taysier's doing well. Uh, I would say Taysier's a lot like some of the uh, uh, Cole Guest, uh, Coy Cronk, that from a maturity standpoint, he has been able to learn the offense. And not only is it learning the offense, but now it's taking the pounding that your body takes every single day during two days. Sometimes freshmen aren't ready for that. Um, but he's shown the ability that he can play um, at a high level, at a high speed. He's a fast young man. And he's playing without thinking right now, which to me is a good sign for a freshman. Um, I expect to see him in the mix. Is that kind of the same approach Nick Westbrook's taken to? Is, is he, do you sense a more confident case kind of coming off the, the strong summer? He had I do, that's right. And I, and I think it all started in the summer. He put a lot of weight on his, on his frame, added some muscle, uh, playing a lot more confident right now. And uh, I think he's ready for a big year. He's just a little bit more poised and calm on the field right now. It's, it's neat to see. Seems like you guys are doing a little bit of red zone work there. Um, how has that been going, and what are some of the keys to succeeding down there? Yeah, it's going well. You know, we're trying to tell our kids this game's about situations. It's not about just first and ten with the ball in the, on, at midfield. You need to be able to score when you have the ball on the, on the plus 20-yard line. And so we're always try, trying to put our quarterbacks in, in different situations, uh, understanding field spaces, understanding how the defense is going to attack us differently. Uh, I think it's going well. You know, Coach Allen needs the work from a defensive standpoint. We need the work from a understanding a field space and, and feeling blitzes. Uh, so we, we try to do as much situational stuff as we can. And just so that when those things show up on game day, we feel like we can react and attack in the right way instead of feeling like we're on our, on our heels. Can you talk about Ricky and how he's <clears throat> I mean, approaching his fifth year. He's been outstanding. And I can't tell you how happy I am. And I just said something, something to, him the, to him today on the field that it's just everywhere he goes, he's, he's running. He's first in line. He transitions first. Um, he should be tired, but he's not. He just continues to go. He continues to step up. Um, to him, this is personal because I think he wants to make sure that his team, his squad, his wide receiver group isn't the one that lets this thing down. He wants to keep it going to a new level. And um, he's had a great camp. I'm so proud of him. I'm excited to see what he can do this year. Just apart from the quarterback, how much tinkering do you have left to do with this offense, just finding lineups and situations that you guys want? Yeah, um, yeah, that's a great question. I, you know, at a certain point, you have to be careful you don't have too much. Sometimes you start doing too many cute things. And so for us, you know, we, we feel good about what we think Rich can do. Uh, we're trying to hone in on those things here as we get ready for, for a um, couple weeks of, of getting ready for FIU. And um, Again, we just have to make sure we're not trying to do too much. But I, but I think we feel good about what he can do. Coach, what have you seen from Danny Friend and the growth from last season to this season and the progression as a leader? Yeah, no, I see a, a tremendous progression as a leader. He's just more confident right now. And I think that that happens at a position where you look around and you realize, I'm the guy now. There's no one older than me. So if I don't do it, no one will. And I sort of see that with Danny. And I, again, like with Ricky Jones, sometimes they just don't get tired because they know they have to go. And that's Danny Friend right now. He's really carrying the load in a lot of different sets in our tight end room. And uh, pleased with where he is. He's staying healthy. And we're hoping to continue that as we move forward. Can you talk about what watching out there, observing things? You know, with his background on offense and stuff like that, behind the scenes, how does he augment you guys? Yeah, he helps a ton. He really helps me a lot. And because, really, I'm a guy coaching quarterbacks, receivers. Coach Wilson has his influence. But really, from a skill standpoint, Coach Watson's another set of eyes, another set of experience of, of things that he's done throughout his career. So he's my right-hand man. I mean, he sits next to me in the meeting room, and we're watching film together. Um, so he's been a, a valuable resource, and I'm really excited about going through the season with him and going from week to week and just learning from him and how we can game plan better and uh, call games better. And just he's just an overall great, positive guy to have around.